and the the age group that needs the higher uh, efficacy drugs you're referring to are they th- those are the younger the younger because they're in that high inflammatory state and then eventually they come off of it as they age because they're th- they're not as high inflammatory or uh eventually yes and and but that's the not all of us do that practice right after age 65 it's really hard to convince one that one i mean neurologist physician whoever that there's still inflammation going on um really what we end up seeing are vascular diseases of the brain so <laughs> strokes and and things like that um so at that point i think that's the time to come off therapy completely but after age 55 even if they still have ms and i know uh, they're older diagnosed MS patients, but do they really need to be on a on that high efficacy of a medication that comes with high side effect? Most of those are tend to be infections, by the way, which are more prevalent the older you get. Uh, and more complications with other medications and other disease which uh kids don't have mm. that. Speaking of hormones, there's another very um specific and hormonal time in a some patients' lives, which is pregnancy and postpartum. So how do pregnancy planning and postpartum impact DMT selection in women with MS transitioning from pediatric to adult care? Yeah. So we've actually gotten really good data um, recently from the Minoran Sopranino studies. Uh, One of my mentors, I consider her one of my mentors, Dr. Riley Bove, um, and many other really uh, docs who've spearheaded this for for a long time, but now we actually have data to 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 guide our patients on um, MS. And as much as we know, tends to quiet down during pregnancy, and it does make sense, right? Fifty percent of the fetus isn't you. Uh, your immune system needs to make sure it doesn't. <laughs> it, it stays quiet and doesn't do anything. Mm. It tends to be quite mm. inflammatory again. Mm. The time of more at risk of relapses is right after birth. Mm. Um, so patients, the time to, I'll, I'll backtrack by saying it's important for us to practice preventive care in MS, mm. just as it is in any disease. The more managed the patient is as they're going into pregnancy, the more likely we are for them to come out of it and not have any relapses and be able to care for their child. So now, with the I don't know if this is just purely hormonal changes or the the genetics or the the physiology of of pregnancy in and itself, um, our medications for the lower efficacy, which tends to be injectable, they're okay to be used during pregnancy, and and this is where there is no FDA guidance i would say they are recommendations but they differ <laughs> between the same group of medications between the fda and the ema which uh, regulatory bodies the ema is mm. the european ca- counterpart so essentially is this truly data driven this this got the recommendations so by saying is the data that we have we know we can treat our patients with high efficacy medications, first, it depends which one you're using. If you're using B cell therapies, we have a window to treat them before they get pregnant as they're going through pregnancy planning and at times during the first trimester. If we're using natalizumab, first and second trimester, and there are medications we try to avoid because of risk of rebounds, something like fingolimod. When they are going right after the baby's born, then we have to think about lactation. And we really, really encourage our patients to breastfeed. Um, it's good for the baby and the mom. Uh, so then, yes, the, do our medications cross the blood? The First of all, do, that, does, do they cross the placenta? Some of them. Um, do they cross at, at what level? Does the patient the medication get into the breast milk? Some of them. Do they get into the patient's gut? Uh, into the baby's gut and get absorbed? Uh, not really. Um, and 
if the relative infant dose is negligible. Nothing that would affect the baby in the breast milk. So this information is available. Lactmed, you will know exactly what to use. Um, but as far as timing and what to do during pregnancy, I think we have data. But again, there's still um, there's still a lot that, as a general neurologist, I would say, needs to learn.